I have to give a shout out to Ash and Lewis for tagging me in this story. And I'm actually surprised with how short the article that I'm about to read to you actually is. And it was posted today on March 4th, 2020. Now, many of you may not know who this is. I'm going to be honest. I didn't know who this was until I opened up the article. But this man's name is Dr. Helmut Kentler. And back in the day, he was one of the leading sexologists in the world. But basically, he had something going going on called the Kindler experiment that basically was putting out this propaganda that and it was in Berlin, by the way, this happened in Berlin, where they did experiments saying that kids deliberately were given to pedophiles to see if sexual abuse was, quote unquote, good for them. This guy did that as an experiment way, way, way back in the day, like probably back depending on your age probably back in our parents time i'm gonna go ahead and read this article coming from the sun.com between 1969 to 2003 these homeless boys aged between 6 and 14 were handed over to pedophiles well they called them pedos they didn't call them pedophiles like we do today because it was thought the vulnerable kids might benefit from their attention The twisted logic behind the Kentler experiment named after the leading sexologist Helmut Kentler, who spearheaded it, was that pedophilia could have positive consequences. Astonishingly, in the late 1960s, Kentler managed to persuade West Berlin's ruling Senate that homeless boys would leap at the opportunity to be fostered by pedophile dads. Are you hearing this? And to see, the thing is, just hearing that alone that could translate to today because a lot of uh, kids out there who are homeless and they're trying to look for a place to stay and don't have anybody to go to. That's what they do. And as a matter of fact, look at Ed Buck. He's a perfect example of that. The only difference is the guys he was messing with were grown men. But it kind of plays out the same way because these guys, as far as we know, really didn't have any uh, body to lean on or anything like that. But they went to him in hopes to get something in return. And, you know, unfortunately, they ended up deceased. But when it comes to boys they're, or, little, or kids, they're vulnerable. And that's what they're taking advantage of is the vulnerability. That could be translated, like I said, to today when they're pushing an agenda. I'm telling you, they are going to try to. I would not be surprised if this experiment is underground going on right now. It was successfully argued that they would be head over heels in love with their new father figures. Now, notice they had to label them, quote unquote, fathers in order for it to be approved. Knowing daggone well, it wasn't having nothing to do with them being the father. About this time, Kindler was publicly lobbying for decriminalization sex between adults and children in West Germany. This man was literally arguing to make pedophilia legal. Back in the day. Now, this is back in the 60s. This is in 2020. This is back in the 60s. Of course, it wasn't in the establishment known as the U.S., but it was in Germany where this was going on. And he was successful in doing it. About this time, Kentler was publicly lobbying for the... Oh, I read that part of it. Excuse me. The, uh, the academic argued youngsters almost always more seriously damaged by their abusers being prosecuted than by the abuse itself. But despite his openly positive views on pedophilia, Kentler was given official blessing for a pilot that paved the way for the experiment. This arranged for boys to move in with three well-known West Berlin pedophiles so they could then learn to live proper, unremarkable lives. So it was almost like they were running a uh, almost like a little brothel for kids later he explained he believed the three men would do so much to help their boys because they had a sexual relationship with them it's amazing sometimes you got to dig back through history to find out where did this stuff come from because it's not like it just came birth out of a petri dish it came from somewhere and, and mind you, like I said, this is not the U.S. we're talking about. This is Berlin, Germany back in the 60s, back when the um, when the Alphabet Academy was uh, seen as something completely different than what it is now. Way different. But see, they couldn't label it that because they probably knew it wouldn't get approved. So they had to say and say that it acted outside of that realm. 
It is not clear whether the West Berlin Senate voted on the experiment or agreed to it behind closed doors. But details are now beginning to come to light of the grotesque policy as the victims demand justice for their ordeal. So that's how we're finding out about it now, because apparently the boys who were boys back then are now grown men and now they want something to be done. It's unfortunate that this is happening now in 2020 and it couldn't be taken care of way back then. Two of the fostered victims are in line for a compensation payout from the city Senate, which has agreed an out of court settlement. They were so emotionally disfigured by their ordeal, they are unable to work. One of the victim's lawyers reportedly pressing for a lump sum of 100,000 pounds plus a monthly pension of 2,500 pounds. The legal proceedings referred to one boy called Marco, who had been taken into care in 1989 after fleeing his violent dad. Age six, he was placed with his foster father, Fritz H., began going into room for a quote-unquote cuddle, which herald for years of abuse. Now, this is 1989 we're talking about, and we're talking about something that got started in the 60s. So now we're 20-plus years into the future from that point. In an interview with Der Spiegel, Marco said for 10 years, he was repeatedly beaten and raped by Fritz H. until he grew up and fought back. Another one of his another of his victims, known as Sven, was abandoned by his parents at the age of seven and contracted hepatitis B on the streets of Berlin. Authorities in 1990 gave him to the pedophile and he suffered repeated sexual assaults, which were allegedly videoed. Boys in the care of Fritz, who has since died, were kept isolated from the world, from the outside world. So many questions, not least why the killer experience experiment was ever allowed, remain unanswered. The city government says it has no idea who in West Berlin's welfare agency agreed for the so-called Kindler experiment. It has since set up a hotline to former kids. Four years ago, the Berlin Senate commissioned a public inquiry into the scandal being carried out by experts at Gottingen University. I probably messed up that the pronunciation of that school. But this is still ongoing and the final report is nowhere near being published. When Kentler died in 2008, he left behind papers describing the entire experiment as a success. But shockingly, he admitted placing youth with pedophiles broke the law. So he knew what he was doing was illegal. But because he was able to word what he was doing a certain way, he was able to, quote unquote, fool the proper people in order for him to actually have it happen. Like I said, he said that he was placing these kids with these fathers. Basically, he masked a pedophile ring by disguising it and calling it a foster care program in so many words. And unfortunately, for so many years, it actually did work. And what's scary is you kind of have that today with Nambla, the National American or the National Association Man Boy Love, no, National American Man Boy Love Association. That's kind of what Nambla is today when you think about it. Like, it's very disgusting and disturbing when you think about it. And the fact that it, it, it's, it's all in the name Man Boy Love, MBL. And like I said, there's actually a website. If you go to Google and type Nambla into the search, it comes up right there as a website. Like it's not even a dark website, not a dark web type of site or underground site. It's on the main page. But this is a crazy story right here. And I can honestly say that I did not know this kind of thing even existed. And it's amazing how far this this sexologist as they called him was able to go and get with his experiment and, they, and the fact that he died in 2008 which in a way is still very recent because is not even two decades old um, since, he, since he died but this is a piece of history that they will never tell you about they would say they want you to learn about world history we didn't learn about that in my world history class when I took it we definitely didn't learn about this Sure, we touched about we touched on Germany, but we didn't touch touch on what happened in this part of Germany. The only time we really talked about anything that was anything German related was when they was talking about the Holocaust. And that's about it. I don't think it went any further than that. But like I said, I would not be surprised if there's other stuff like this going on today in the world. 
Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. Have your notifications turned on. And I will talk to you in the next one.